Hey guys, it's Mark from Migraine Professional. I used to suffer from migraines and headaches until about five years ago when I figured out how to beat them and I've been migraine free ever since. Now I teach other people how to do the same and in this video, we're going to be talking about seven tips on how to deal with being a mom with migraines. So first and foremost, of course, we wanna make sure we plan ahead, we're preparing meals, we're regulating our blood sugar. Regulating our blood sugar is one of the most crucial things we can do. We have our meals there, they're ready, they're, they're lower on the carbohydrates, we're getting enough proteins and fats to get full and to last us into the next meal. We have, if we need, we have protein and fat snacks, healthy protein and fat snacks that are there to support us. We're making sure that we're keeping our blood sugar stable all throughout the day, give us that nice smooth hum. Otherwise, we're gonna have blood sugar drops, our mood is gonna be up and down, our energy levels are going to be absolutely through the ground, they're gonna be terrible, we're gonna have a bad sleep, we're, we're, everything is just gonna be feeling like it's falling apart when our blood sugar is not stable. Want to make sure we're, we're regulating it. Then, of course, we're maintaining water intake throughout the day. We're keeping a nice steady amount of water throughout the day. It doesn't have to be a lot, not a little. A fair amount of water. We're making sure that there's enough minerals in the water so that water is getting into our tissues and it's keeping our pee alkaline. So urinary alkalosis is an amazing way to make sure that we retain minerals, especially our crucial minerals like magnesium. We're retaining them and we're keeping them when we are um, when we have alkaline pee. So this is generally a pee that is clear as opposed to pee that is more acidic. But again, we don't want to be relying on on coffee and diuretics like coffee for that. Then we want to make sure that we are tracking our menses, tracking our menstrual cycle. There's a lot of apps out there that can help us with that. Um, and, but we want to make sure that we're, uh, we're aware of where we are in our cycle. At different points in the cycle, we will have different amounts of energy and we will be more apt to do different things. So let's say during ovulation, we will have the most energy, our hormones will be very high, but then during uh, our period, uh, we'll be much lower, we'll be much more uh, disposed to, to eat uh, more foods, kind of fattier foods, better foods that are kind of feeding us, and, but our, and our energy levels will be lower, we'll be more apt to kind of lay around and just take it easy. There, there's no need to kind of stress. So we wanna make sure we're, we're tracking our menses and if we need to, if we're getting menstrual migraines, we're getting our hormones tested throughout the month so we know what's happening. Then, of course, we wanna know our triggers. We wanna know our food triggers and our environmental triggers, but we want to make sure that we're checking in with ourselves. So we're we're stopping, taking a little break, breaking the, the stress, and asking our body, where are we? Where are we on our trigger levels? How close to our threshold are we? How close are we to triggering? We want to ask, we want to know, can we afford to do the thing that we want to do, that action we want to do, or do we need to take a step back? Do we need to go, we need to uh, take some more rest? Do we need to do some exercises that will help build our energy and our resources? Do we need to go eat some food that will help us bring down our trigger levels? We need to, we need to constantly stop and ask our body and check in. Because if we don't check in, our body is then, it's just like a slave to us and it's not a, it's not a relationship. So we wanna make sure we're developing that relationship with our body, we're listening to what it's saying. Then, of course, we want to make sure that we bring our children into this. They understand. We want to make sure that they understand what a migraine is. Uh, and children are, uh, they are very self-centered. They are egocentric. Everything is about them. So if you're in pain, they're going to think it's about them. So you want to make sure that you take that guilt off of them, um, that, that, that they know that it's not about them, then that... Um, that it, it's not because of them that you are in pain. And so a simple way to kind of explain it to them is that it's like a brain freeze. So it's like a strong, long brain freeze and you just need some time to, to kind of rest and recover. And you, you wanna make sure that you give them some kind of role that they can play, that they can help you. So they feel like they're contributing, they're helping you, they're helping you kind of get over it, even if it's something, um, even if it's something tiny. Of course, next thing, we wanna make sure that we have a dream team 
especially being a mom, we have to have that support network. We have to have that dream team. The dream team is the team of people behind us that help us achieve our dream. We have children, our dream is to raise those children. We wanna make sure that we have people there that can support us, that are there like a migraine pal or a migraine buddy that is there to um, kind of, we can create an attack plan with so that if you feel that you've crossed your threshold, your migraine is starting to build, you've triggered, you can call them, you can text them, you can tell them, okay, attack plan, like get, get the attack plan going. They know to, to set things up for you, to take the children off your hands so that you can, um, you, you can do what you need to do to whatever, whatever it is, get your bucket, go into your room, lie in your bed, turn off all the lights and, and get that, that rest you need to recover. You want to make sure that you have that, that network and you have sort of communicated that attack plan with them so that you can uh, kind of approach it together and you're dealing with it together. You're not alone in it. You're not frustrated and overwhelmed. Then, of course, the next thing we want to explore, we want to explore our options. So with any with any illness, with any chronic disease, there's our standard of care, which is our doctors or our neurologists, but then there are the other people that, that help us dive in deeper, that deeper into the more actionable steps that we can take, like our functional medicine practitioners, our naturopaths, our nutritionists, our lifestyle coaches, that they all give us very actionable, simple things we can do to manage our stress, manage our thoughts, manage our lives, manage our finances, manage our, our children, manage our, our nutrition, manage all of those things that make up the, the pieces of the pie that lead to either an overwhelmed mom or a mom that's, that's, that's thriving. So next thing, we always want to make sure that we are easy on ourselves. I mean, as a, as a parent with migraines, we got to make sure that we're, we're taking it easy and we understand that if a migraine triggers, it's okay. The housework can wait. The housework can wait. There's no need. Don't worry about it. Um, the, the, stop, stop putting the guilt on yourself. Don't feel guilty. It's okay. Your children still love you. Don't worry about it. You always make sure that you, you accept any offers of help. Um, anything that you get, just accept them and, and then and be grateful. Be grateful that you're getting help. Um, don't, don't sort of take a pride or an egoic approach to it. Just, just accept it. And your, your migraines do not make you any less of a mom or a dad. Um, you're still an amazing parent, even if you have migraines. I'm going to link to a free guide in the description below on the five factors that make or break your migraines. And let me know in the comments, which tip did you find the most helpful? Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from migraineprofessional.com. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner. And if you want to learn more about migraines and headaches than you've ever known before and understand what causes them, what creates them and what you can do about them, make sure to go to migraineprofessional.com. Thanks.